Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to thank you and welcome you here to Good News Church City Church where Jesus is Lord. And do remember, we're here on Wednesday at 7 o'clock for our weekday Bible study, and we've been having just a wonderful time. So we'd like to invite you to invite someone to like, share, do what it takes to help get the word out. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to bring the word to your precious people. We pray now, Lord God, as the word come forth, it shall pierce the heart of the hearer, and it shall be transformed into doers. And we give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We, we have been talking on the topic, the rest of God, because we all know that we must enter into that place where we are. Let me say it like the, like the Bible said, Abraham said he was fully persuaded. Yes. We got to come to a place where we are fully persuaded that what God has promised, He's able also to perform. And somebody say Amen to that. Amen. So therefore, we seek the rest of God. That's the end to the place of faith where you are no longer puzzled about it, or uh, you so you have an anxiety about it, and you're confused. You're not sure. So I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. Because I'm entering into the rest of God. Because I've entered into the rest of God. Let's see, Numbers 23, 19, I love it. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I like that. Amen. Amen. I like that because that's sure time. That's being fully persuaded, yes. you know. And that's the verdict. Amen. God has spoken. <laughs> And that's it. That's amen. it. So amen. amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. So let us get started. I'm going to back up a little bit from where we were last week to Isaiah chapter 26. And we're going to start back with verse 3, I believe. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 23. Verse 3, pardon me. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. It says here, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Now, he going to keep you in perfect peace, a sound mind. You're going to be in the rest, I'm in the rest of God. And I will remain. And I will remain. Because you trust in him. Yes. See, that's it. It's almost like to say, if you come in after rain, you won't get wet. You believe that, right? Yes. If you keep your mind staying on him. You're going to be in the rest, and you're going to have peace. It's just that simple. But you just got to trust. He said, because he trusts in thee. And you're going to have to be in the place where you trust in him. Yes. Verse 4. It's the trusting in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting. Come on. Strength. How much strength? Everlasting, everlasting strength. As long as you and him. I'm strong in the Lord, how? And in the power of his might. So his strength is there for you over now. I believe Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, I think it's, it's Isaiah chapter 40. Or is it Isaiah chapter 39, verse 40? Hold on. Let's that's, 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 take a real exact picture. Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for um, um, the scripture that says, uh, the, 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 uh, the young shall run and not be weary. That's Isaiah 39. 39. 39. Even a youth shall Yeah, Isaiah chapter 39. I'm sorry. No, no. 40. Isaiah 40, that's what I thought we were getting. Isaiah 40, chapter, Isaiah chapter 40, verse, let's start out at verse 28. It says, Has thou not known? Asking you a question. Has thou not heard? <laughs> I like that. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, come on, he increases strength. That's why you got to come into him, because that's where your strength is. Your strength is in God. Your strength is in him. I'm strong with the Lord and the power of his might. The joy of the Lord is my strength. There's many places he talks about his strength. Yes. Look at what verse, um, 40, uh, verse 29 says. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that has no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they, somebody said, but they. But they. The word but, not against everything was stated before. But they that wait 
upon the Lord, come on, shall renew their strength. That's renewing their strength. That's exchanging his strength yes. for you. So when I'm weak, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Then am I strong. That's what he's doing there. He's exchanging strength there. He's pulling you through. Like the song said, it was you pulling me through. Yes, yes. You weren't on your own. It was him pulling you through. He said, what they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Now, you know the story of the eagle. You know, the eagle is when the storm is going on, the eagle don't stay down in all the mess. The thunder, the thunder and the lightning and the booming and the banging. He fly above the storm and soar. Here's what we have to do in the spirit when, when trouble and, and things trying to puzzle us and, and come against us. We have to rise up in the spirit above the storm. And say, when I'm weak, when I'm weak then I'm I strong. Then I'm we have to rise above the circumstances and the situation. That's where we rule and reign in the spirit. Yes. And then you watch for the manifestation. Somebody help me teach this. Amen. Praise God. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Yes. They shall walk, come on, and, and not faint. They shall be refreshed. Some being refreshed I'm being by the word of God. Word because of God. the word brings strength. It, it is designed to build you. But the enemy can't break you. You just have to make up in your mind that you're going to take a stand. Yes. Say, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to be. I'm going to stand on God's word. On God's this word. is what we have to do for things. So I'm going to tell you something. Every level does another devil. So I understand you got through this one. And when you get there, and you stay you stay there, and then you pack your out. Now you got to go to another level. And you meet another devil. It's a new fight. But see, every round is higher and higher. Watch this. Every battle get tougher and tougher, but watch this. We don't take it like this, so I can deal with it. I can deal with so I'm gifted enough, I'm gifted enough to deal with it. To deal with it. The, the Lord brought me through this level. Come on. Yeah. He brought me through that level. He brought me through that level. So I'm getting stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. Yes. So when I go to the next level, I don't carry that spirit of his anxiety, weariness. I don't carry that with me. He said, see, what you do, you watch how you're doing on each level. I watch myself when I overcome, so when I believe God for something by faith, and when it manifests, I watch, I, I take a look back, I peek back and see, how did I really act? Did I conduct myself as a mature Christian, or did I just blunder through the thing that God brought me on? I check that out, see, because God is perfecting you on every level. You will have to face some situations that when it comes, you will have to step back and say, okay, God's got this, let's go. <laughs> you can't always be standing back wondering the word. You got to somebody say you got to walk on. Because we walk by faith. Yes. So the next level you hit, you're gonna have to be in that place, okay? You're gonna say I'm gonna act like I've been there. Okay. Say I'm gonna act like I've been there. I'm gonna act like I've been there. Because like, my God is with me. Because my God is with me. Yeah, if he brought you through that, come on, he's ready for the next one. Yes. He's telling you to come on. I got you. Yes. And that's what we're going to have to come to the place where we're not so concerned to what we're puzzled. But you just sit down in a daze. The devil sees that. And that's what he want to catch you, sitting on the curb with your head in your hand. See? But so, no, so that's not me. That's not me. So I look, I look. unto the hills. Unto the hills. coming to my help. Whatever comes up, I always look to God. No matter how high I get, I always look up to him. Because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Whatever I need an answer for, he's got it. Praise God. Whatever I need is in him. If it's not in him, I don't need it. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Because see, the enemy wants you always blundering. Trying to get here, trying to get there, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to figure this out. I ain't trying to figure none of it out. I'm waiting for the manifestation because I have believed. Yes, Lord. I have received. Yes. So I'm waiting for the manifestation. But watch this. In my waiting room, I'm not just sitting there. Somebody said, I'm occupied. I'm occupied. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm not just sitting there. I'm occupied. Yes. yes. And when I occupy, that's what he said. That was, that was Jesus' word. He said, occupy until I come. Yes, sir. Not an occupy, simply mean do business. Yes. Somebody said, carry on. Carry on. Don't stop there because you complete that. Carry on. Go on to the next level. Yes. He'll be there when you get there. He's going to meet you at the point of your face. He's waiting on you. Yes, yes, yes. See, the Bible talks about it. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians um, chapter 9. Hallelujah. Uh, no, not 1 Corinthians. I 
second Corinthian part. Time means second Corinthians. First Corinthians 2 and 9. Glory to God. The member of the righteous is blessed. I have the mind of Christ that his mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, that, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them. Come on. That, that love him. See, go back to. to Isaiah 64. That's, it's the same thing, but I'm looking for the word wait. Isaiah 64 and 4. It said, For since the beginning of the world, from creation, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O God, besides thee. What he hath prepared for him. Come on. That waited for him. That's why when you occupy, you're waiting, but you're still doing business. I'm not just sitting waiting. I'm still doing business. I'm occupying because I know that he that shall come will come. Yeah. So you want to stay on top of us. So yeah. I said, stay in tune, stay in tune. With, the with the Holy Spirit. Because see, he's leading you and guiding you every step of the way, but you've got to be making those steps to get to the next step. Yeah. He's not going to omit any steps. Yeah. And like the old saying, uh, there's no elevator to success. You must take the stairs. So we've got to be in place where we're doing what we're called to do and staying busy at it and not getting frustrated and, and confused in the midst of it because you don't see it the way you plan to see it. Go back to Isaiah chapter 46. We're going to finish up over there. Isaiah chapter 26. We're going to finish up and move on there. you got to be, you got to act like you know what you're doing. Yes. See, the devil really don't know. Because, see, you walk about faith. And faith is the substance of things hopeful and evidence is not seen. So he can't really see what you're working with. So, therefore, he have no defense with it. The only defense he have is to try to play with your mind. True. Amen. He have no defense because he can't see it. And somebody says manifest in every moment. So by him not being able to see it, if you keep believing and he don't catch you with your head in your hand and just kind of wondering and all, you got to be. Thanks be unto God who always causes us yes. to triumph. Yes. Always, not sometimes. Yes. Always causes us to triumph. Mm -hmm. uh, we said Isaiah chapter 3, uh, Isaiah 26 and 3 and 4. Um, go down to verse 12. 20, 20, 26 and 12. It says, Lord, thou will ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all the works of our hand. You know what that word right means? He have already worked the works. <laughs> He's already finished with it. He's already worked the works of our hand. It's already done. We just got to face our way into it and keep moving. Yes, yes. He's already done. It's a done deal. It's finished. And all we have to do is face our way into it. And don't get caught up in how and what. Just somebody should stay in. Stay in. Stay in. Go to Jeremiah chapter 6. We're going to catch up here in a second. Here. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. It says here, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways. What ways? His ways. Yes. And seek and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. He told you what he wanted you to do. And walk his ask for it and walk therein. And ye shall find what? Rest for your soul. Lord. That's where you're going to find peace when you walk in his ways. You're going to find rest for your soul, but you got to do it. But notice what it goes on to say here about the children of Israel. But they said, we will not walk it, walk there in it. Somebody said, but we will. But we will. See, this wasn't written for us to follow them. This was written for us to follow him. See, when you, Paul said, follow me, come on, as I follow Christ. So he was saying, if you see me, Aaron, don't come after me. Amen, amen. Stay in the ways. Yes. In the path. Straight is the way. Jesus. And there is the gate. So, you, you, you know, I tell people all the time, because somebody tell you something wrong to do, it doesn't make you do it. You have a decision. You know your limits. 
You know how far you can go. So you don't have to go that way. But they would walk in it. But you know something? The interesting thing about it, God loved them so every time they did it, and when they cried out to the Lord, to the Lord, he heard them. Not only did he hear them, come on, he delivered them. But somebody said that's a better way. We don't have to wander off. We don't have to walk off. We don't have to follow somebody off. We know the way, and we should walk in it. Amen? Amen. We Amen. should definitely, without a doubt, walk in it because that's what he called it. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Chapter 6. And let us look at verse 31. It says here, <laughs> Matthew 6, 31, and it reads, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where are, shall we be clothed? He said, Therefore, take no thought. Don't even give it a thought. Don't even give it a thought. Don't even give it a thought. Amen. Amen. I'm saying again, don't even give it a thought. See, God's got you. He said he was going to take care of you, right? So if he said that, you need to just keep going. If you don't see it, what do you do? You keep going. He said, take no thought. And don't, don't ever take a thought. Because if you begin to think, you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to wonder, you end up wondering what should you do. The, tra the Passion Translation reads it this way. So then, forsake your words. I like that. Yes. So then, forsake your words. Yes. Why would you say, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? Why would you even say that when he's already given you his word? Somebody said, walk in. Walk in. See, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to walk in the words that he's already given you. And if you walk in those words, everything's going to work out well. And the thing about it is that you've not placed six nine. Be not weary. Come on. And well doing. As long as you're doing well, you're moving forward. Yes. yes. See, one thing about it, I remember some years ago, I asked my pastor, I said, what am I to do if I get off? He said to me, don't worry about that. He said, you are a submitted man. And if you get off, God will speak to you. He said, but if you don't hear nothing, keep going. <laughs> so now, you see, you notice how I was trying to take a thought. And that correction came because I was interested. I want to know. You don't even have to think that way. Forsake your words. Forsake your words. <laughs> Y'all let this thing sink in now. Yeah. Anything you're trying to worry about, forsake it. Yes, yes. Let it go. Yeah. Don't even try to hold on to it. Somebody said, move to the next level. Move to the next level. Verse 32 out of the King James. It says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Now the Passion Translation, Passion Translation said, For that is what the unbelievers chase after. Does your heavenly Father already know the things your body requires? So we should be acting like the unbelievers. Yes. You're supposed to be able to tell the difference between the saints and the ants. <laughs> See, your actions should even be different. Your thinking should be different. Should be. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Come on. But be ye transformed by renewing of your mind. It's saying the same thing here. You shouldn't even think like that. You shouldn't even think like that. You should be thinking on the other hand. Instead of, when do we get it? Lord God, I thank you I got it. I think I've already received it. Where is it? I don't know. But I know I got it. It's just that simple. That's the kingdom way, see. You, you, you get caught up in this place where you're worried about these things. He told you, forsake your words. Let that go. Verse 33 out of the King James. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and come on, his righteousness, which is his way of doing things, and all these things, come on, shall be added unto you. The Passion Translation reads, so above all, constantly, constantly, seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Wow. Notice what it called it, less important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's more important? That you walk in his way. Jesus. That you walk in his way. That's more important than the thing we believe God for. That's more important because if you walk in his ways, it's yours. See, he's trying to separate you from the things that trouble you, the things that worry you. So he said if you walk in his ways, all these less necessary things will be added unto you abundantly. More than you can ask or think. Think about that. Lord. But it all boils down to the way we're thinking about things. So is a man thinking in his heart, so is he. And lots of times, uh, people believe in God for things, and, and what happens is the enemy makes it look like it ain't coming. But you can't be moved by what you see. You're going to have to only be moved by what you believe. What did God say? Did he say he was going to do it? Well, it's already done. It's just a matter of time before manifestation. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3 and 4. Therefore, King James, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The Passion Translation says, refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Yes, yes. We can man do it for a night. Yes. Come on. But joy cometh in the morning. So you don't have to worry about none of it. You really know it's time to occupy and continue to do business. Jesus. See, the, the enemy gets you on delay when you don't occupy. When you stop, everything stops. You stop, you worry. Every, faith and everything, everything stops. It says be constant. Constantly believe it. Constantly. Don't ever stop. Don't let up. Somebody said metal to the pedal. A pedal to the pedal. <laughs> you gotta keep going. You you gonna like you gonna be like a shooter by woman when her son had died. She told the man, she told the servant, she said, listen, match it to the floor. Mm -hmm. She said, slack not unless I beat you. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they didn't have red light, but every red light got rain. <laughs> and I bet you the angels protected the traffic. Yeah. See, God works that way. Yeah. And you gotta see it that way. So he went through every stop sign, every hill sign. He went across the roundabout. He didn't go around. <laughs> <laughs> He was trying to get her there because he was doing what she told him. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad that came up because I'm going to tell you something. If your man of God tell you to do something, listen, it'll happen because he told you. Yes. Your job is to carry the oil. You are covered. You are protected. See, sometimes people go, I don't know if I can do that. Do what he told you. Yes. He told Peter to come and whatever. He came. <clears throat> See, it, it, nothing can stop you when you're given a mandate like that. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. But people get caught in a place where they don't know what they ought to do. Man, I'm going to fall out for good. Yes. I'm going to receive mine. I don't want to leave nothing on the table. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I don't even want to leave here until I've done all God will call me to do. You know, because he's given you a mandate. And when it's given to you, all you got to do is carry it out. I remember one show. I heard a preacher say, uh, God told me they was going to have, uh, they was going on TV. And uh, he told him who in the congregation was going to be his cameraman. And he said, he told me, God said, you're going to be my cameraman. He said, Pastor, I ain't never even had a camera before. <laughs> and they said, you wanted to find out better than that. I'm, I'm telling you, when it's given to you, those words carry, uh, see, no word of God is for the power. It carries enough anointing on it that all you have to do is act on it. Yes. Everything you need, everything you desire is there for you. Yes. You just have to be willing and ready and make sure that you are walking in the way he told you to walk. Amen. Amen. You can't be afraid. You can't get here no longer what turn to make. Make the turn he told you to make. Yes, yes. It's just like you trust in the GPS. It tell you to turn here. Just do what it says. Lord. Just do what it says. And, and, and watch this. Most of the time it looks like it's not getting you there. That's the way faith is. You walk by faith. Most of the time, it looks like it's not getting you there. You see all of these unnecessary turns and, and places just don't look like I should, I should be going through here to get to where I'm going. This don't match up. That's a part of the process. 
That's part of the process. So you got to be in that place where you make sure that you are following the directions. Yes. When I was in school, I remember fourth and fifth grade, they had a, some volumes of books. And the volume I liked the most was following directions. But I see today why. I love that book, Following Directions. If you're following the direction, you can't miss it. You might get to a place where you don't understand and you pray for help. You pray for understanding. The Bible says wisdom is the principle of the thing. But in all that get, get an understanding. Yes, yes. See, if you put if you put the gadget together, you got 50 screws. You say, for instance, I actually put my bicycle together, or my motorcycle, or whatever, my scooter, it don't matter. Or what they got now, they call it side by side, but we don't put them together. But if I ask you to put it together, you say I'm finished, and you got 50 screws and 50 bolts. I tell you, I'm not riding it. <laughs> I'm not getting on that thing. You got too many spare parts here. Yes. They go somewhere. And if they're not in place, it's not going to work. So you're going to have to make sure that you follow direction. Praise you, Jesus. You're going to have to make sure that you yes. follow direction. It reminds me of the widow with the oil. She went to the man of God and cried out. The creditor is coming to take my two sons to pay the debt off that my husband left us in. Now watch this. The debt wasn't to take them down there and let them work till the debt was paid off. They was the debt. He was taking her children to be with him forever. And the man of God said, what do you have? She said, nothing, because that's what she physically was in the natural. And then she said, oh, save a pot of oil. And that oil was the burial oil left over from her husband. Left over from her husband. And he said, get the oil, borrow vessels, and borrow not a few. Borrow not a few. You and your boys go in the house, shut the door. Now, no, they couldn't let Pookie come and Ray Ray. They couldn't let them come because, see, they would have messed up the plan. See, you're going to have to follow directions. You're going to follow it all the way. You can't just get it and run off with it. And they went in, and the Bible said the oil flowed. And I guess the guy said, well, she said, give me another container. They said, we are out. We don't have any more containers. And the Bible said the oil stayed, meaning it stopped. Now watch this. When she got the oil, she didn't run off with it. She went back to the man of God. Because see, watch this. I got this oil. <clears throat> what do I do with it? She didn't want to do what she knew to do with it. She wanted to follow directions. And that's what it's going to take for you to get what you believe in God for. Yes, yes. You have to follow directions. Whatever they tell you, that's what you do. See, and after she did that, <clears throat> she went back to the man of God and told him what happened. He said, okay, now, sell the oil. Watch this. Pay the debt and live off the rest. Yes. Because yes. she followed direction. I'm telling you, your blessing is in obedience. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. In obedience, you following the direction. You have to follow the procession. Don't let somebody come tell you because they're kidding you, your sister, your cousin, your mama, I don't hear that. Follow the direction. Whatever the matter God tell you to do with it, just do it. God's got you. I said, God's got you. Yes, yes. Because see, people, when you get the stuff, folks got all the answers. But in getting the stuff, they didn't know how to help you get it. They watch you step back and watch you go through. So you should say, I'm telling you, heal God. Heal God. You will have to become more familiar with the voice of God. That way you won't miss it. So I'm not saying that. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what we're going to have to be in that place where we become more familiar with God. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Philippians chapter 4. And verse 19. And it reads, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, or by the Word of God. Uh, the Passion Translation reads it, I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundance riches of glory, of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. See, Paul was really saying to them, in King James, my God, because, see, he has seen God and experienced God on a different level, so therefore he took him to himself. 
He didn't know what level they was believing on, but he knew they had given him. But my God will supply every need. He said, he didn't pass it. I am convinced, or I am fully persuaded, my God will fully satisfy every need you have. Fully satisfy every need that you have. Every need. Now, you, you got to, again, here, this is entering into the rest of God. Yeah. You got to know this. Because, see, when, when you're given a task and you go out to do it, you got to be convinced. Yes, yes. You going to have to be convinced. And most of the time, you're going to convince yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going on with or without. As we've always said, we're going to worship God with the stuff yes. or without the stuff. Because that's what we're called to. Yes, yes. Man was made to worship, and he's going to worship something. Not only that, man was made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for the man to get on a set aside time to worship, to enter into that mess. And that's what we have to do. We can't go at it no other way because it will, somebody said it won't work that way. It won't work that way. Go over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Because this is, we, we, we're all in a race. We're all in a race. And see, sometimes the enemy wants you to think, you, you, you know, there's no, no restoration, no restitution. Matthew chapter 11, look at verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I have it laid, and I will give you, come on. Yes. All you got to do is go to him. You, you, you know, you feel like you're getting away, go talk to God. You don't have to come in no religious way. Just conversate with him. Converse with him. Just talk with him and tell him what's going on. There's no certain way you have to come. Only thing I know you are, he's entering into his gates. Come on. With thanksgiving and praise. Now why are you doing that? Because you know something. So I'm going to get just what I want. I'm going to get just what I want. So I'm going to thank him in advance. Thank and I believe that's why that's your spirit. Praise you, Jesus. He should come with the right attitude, in other words. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Why are you thanking him? Because you believe you already received. And you're praising him for it because you got it. So you're going to have to come that way. And as you come that way, he's come unto me, all ye that are. Come on, read that again with verse 28. Come unto me, all, all ye, ye that lay and are heavy laid. And what he's going to do? And I'm going to give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. Yes. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find, come on, rest yes. unto your soul. He's constantly talking about giving you rest in your soul. See, because some people, in their soul, they get weary. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell people with a weary soul because they just look like they're out. Look like they're far out there in a deep days. They're wondering what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Where are we going? Somebody said we're going to the top. <laughs> we're not only coming up, say we're going over. We're going over. And you got to believe this. you got to be convinced that this thing is going to happen. You can't be in a place where you... you you're not sure. Or, or you're standing and you're waiting and, and, and nothing is going on. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. So I'm fully persuaded. Fully that, persuaded. What that what he's promised, he's also able to perform. Also able to perform. We're going to have to be. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. You know, in, in Luke, what's that? Luke 1 and 65, it says that. Let's, let's go over there. Luke 145. 145. Luke 145. Now it, it says here, it's talking about Mary here, but this is for whosoever. Mm -hmm. This is the written word, verse 45. It says, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be, come on, a performance of those things which was told her from the Lord. And what did Mary do? And Mary said, my soul do it, magnify the Lord. Because she received it and she believed it. Yes. And whatever God has spoken to you, yes. whatever he has promised you, it's coming to pass. Yes. It's coming to pass. you got to stand up. See, I'm going to tell you, lots of times we be wondering why, why, why am I on delay? I was told once, don't ever despise delay. Don't ever despise delay. It could be a reason. Could be a mighty reason for delay. I never forget. I was I was in Chicago at that time. I was 
working for myself, and I, I thought this day I'd stop by and see a relative, and as I was leaving the place, I was putting my key in the truck to, to, to get out, to, I mean, to get in, to go, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't leave right now, wait a few minutes. I heard that so clear, I, I paused. And as I paused, I didn't say anything to him because you can't explain this. The Holy Spirit speaks to you, nobody else, it's for you, okay? So you don't have to say anything to anybody, it's for you. you, you, you listen, you go to somebody explain something to somebody, the Holy Spirit said to you, they're going to say, are you all right? <laughs> are, are, you, are you sure they think you're crazy? But as I paused and began to talk to him a little while longer, and then I felt a release in my spirit, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to move on. And as I moved on, when I came to this intersection, there was a terrible accident. And it came to me clearly. The devil had a plan for you. Somebody said, but God blocked it. But God blocked it. I mean, just seconds in front. I mean, just as, watch this. As I was pulling up, I saw one lady who was trying to get out the car. But those few minutes that I held on to that delay, so don't ever despise delay. Delay can save your life. Delay can do a lot of things for you, so don't ever despise it. Just wait patiently on the Lord. If he speaks to you, wait patiently. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in that. Now, I want to, um, let's see, go over here. Okay, okay, we need to go back. I, I need to go back over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. He said, take my yoke upon you, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yes. He's saying his load is light. But let me read this to you out of the Passion Translation. Verse 28. It said, are ye weary, carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you will discover that I am gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me, for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. See, listen, sometimes we complicate this gospel ourselves. We complicate it. We really do. Through work, frustration, you don't have to do that. You heard what he just said. It's light. It's easy. All you got to do is walk in. And lots of times, religion makes you complicated yes. or makes it harder than you. None of that stuff was added. That was added by people themselves. Mm -hmm. Each individual adds the religious part to it. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to add nothing to this but faith. As you walk in it, you're going to see God deliver you. Yes. You're going to see yourself going from level to level, defeating every devil. Yes. Yes. Let me say that again. You're going to see yourself going from level to level, defeating every devil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everyone. Yes. Thanks be unto God. Yes. Who giveth us the victory. Yes. Through yes. our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you need to get something praise out of this Jesus. message. Give God a hand praise. Amen. Look, never step to Jesus and Lord, person to save your life too. Feel free to do so at this time. I repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord you know my life. You know, my life. You know how I live. You know how I ask you to forgive me. Forgive and I receive forgiveness unto myself. I, I, believe, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus died. And on the third day, on the third day God, God raised him from the dead. And, and he is my new Lord, Lord and, Savior. and Savior. And I thank you, Lord, thank you. for saving me. Save me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you went through that prayer, whole heaven is rejoicing with you. So we would like for you to give us a call because we have a packet of information we'd like to get out to you by dialing 601 845 6095. 601 845 6095. And also, if you'd like to give, to give online, click the link in the comment section to give me a text. Text GNCC and the amount you want to give to 73256. 73 Two, five, six, and while you're preparing your time and offering, I want to go ahead and bless them. Father, we thank you for every time. And as for the seed, Lord God, we pray and ask, Lord God, that you would send forth a, a fresh wind of anointing, Lord God, to cause them to enter into the rest, Lord God, and trust with all of their heart in you yes. that what you promise you are able also to perform. 
In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. We want to thank you again for tuning in. And do remember we're here on Wednesdays at, six o'clock, at 7 o'clock for our weekday Bible study. So again, we'd like to invite you to invite somebody. But before you go today, I want to bless you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, but not your presence, I commission the angel watch over every person to keep them safe from all and in danger. Pray his protection about them, and I plead the blood of them. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Till we meet again, God bless you and remain blessed.